Isle of Dogs. Directed by Zanderson, the animated film Isle of Dogs, uses set design to the feature's advantage. This is especially displayed in the set for the fictional city in Japan Megasaki. The sets in Megasaki show the director's depiction of Japan in 20 years' time. The sets while realistic, exaggerate real life. For example, the city of Megasaki is incredibly industrial with skyscrapers however this is to an unreal scale. The use of the sets make the city feel as though it goes on forever, with every inch being used for a large building of some sort. This has a heavy contrast against the sets used for Trash Island. The sets used for Trash Island vary in sizes, however they all have an empty feeling and display how neglected and forgotten the island is. This contrast aids in the story greatly, as it follows the poor treatment of the dogs in this fictional future who are abandoned on Trash Island, while the city of Megasaki neglects them and becomes more industrial and yet fluorescent. Without the sets, the film would make little sense, as there are huge differences in the settings that are quite important for the plot. On top of this, the film would be less visually appealing, as it would lack the bright colors and details of the sets. Over 240 sets were built during the production of this film. These sets are planned out using detailed concept art. The entire production took place in the UK, yet the official budget has not yet been made public. The art director was Curtin Dell and the production designer was Paul Harrod. While there were no conflicts with the designers and director with their ideas, however they did need to tell us how certain shots are physically not possible. For example, as was liked to have his shots fully in focus, this became problematic in certain shots, close-ups of dogs would have the eyes in focus, however the end of the nose would be out of focus due to the limitation of the lens. As the film is set in a fictional Japan, it uses the different art styles that have originated in Japan. These styles are prominent both through the characters and the sets. The sets have drawn clear inspiration from a modern Japanese movement in architecture called metabolism. Most influential in the 1970s, metabolism was created shortly after World War II during the reconstruction of Japan. These new structures considered the idea of an increasing population and so the metabolist style designed buildings to have features easily replaced once their lifespans were over, much like living cells. This style was studied by Zanderson, in particular the work of Kenzo Tange. The sets use styles from both the past and present to make a different style that could be imagined of the future of Japan, adding a unique stylistic element. While some sets use the traditional technique for set production, carpentry, which involved the use of wooden paint, other sets required an alternate approach to production. As some aspects of the set would be animated, for example, the water and rags waving in the wind, the designers had to take a more organic method in order to keep filming as practical as possible, with as little use of digital effects as possible. This meant that a variety of materials were needed, to animate the water. They actually use cling film to give the water-like appearance. A lot of other materials needed consisted of foam, that would be blended to be used for the leaves of trees and clouds plastic screws and old machine parts, these were used to add a more neglectful feeling in Trash Island. The final overall effects the use of set design has on the audience are quite strong and they vary. In some of the sets for Megasaki, the feeling given is calm and laid back with soft lighting and clean colors, however in other sets the impression given is of strict rule and order and underlying threat through the use of bold colors. These relate very well to the context of the scenes, as in scenes where characters are in no threat, the sets depict a calm color scheme, however in scenes where characters tend to be more angry and aggressive, the sets tend to have bold colors present. The Shining The film is set almost entirely within a hotel called the Overlook Hotel. This is portrayed by the film set effectively as it uses a mixture of miniatures, exterior shots of a real hotel and the use of sets to bring the illusion that the film is being shot inside a hotel rather than a studio. The sets are not realistic. For example the hallways and adjacent room seem to be impossibly placed as when mapped out. 
they would overlap. This was done on purpose, as to add to the illusionary feeling of the film and to add to the character's insanity. The set aids in the story as it presents effective symbolism that represents the eventual loss of the character's sanity. This is portrayed by the repetitive designs of the carpets and how the halls and pillars make the characters seem small in comparison. This induces tension as it makes the characters appear more vulnerable. With a budget of $15 million, the sets were constructed at Elstree Studios. The art director was Leslie Tompkins. He based the sets for the hotel interior on the Yosemite Hotel. The differences being the halls were more spacious to make an agoraphobic feeling. The style of the set was designed to feel like the halls of a hallway, to match this feel the set had a mid-century modern style. The set is not used to showcase fashion trends, if it were to attempt this the feeling of horror may be lost. The sets were constructed using materials such as cotton and wood. Due to this and the intense heat coming from the bright lamps used to make it appear to be a snow day, the set caught fire and burned down. Fortunately, all the shots have been filmed in that scene. There is no use of CGI for the sets. The overall effect given through the set design is that of confusion and tension. The impossible structure implied by the way the sets are designed can only be noticed if you're observant and it makes the hotel feel like a maze and without escape. Additionally, the sets are open with wide halls and large pillows, making the characters seem tiny. This is amplified in the scene where Danny plays with his cars in the hallway. He is so much smaller compared to the rest of the room, even the pattern of the carpet minimizes him and makes him look boxed in.